Sorry. All right, everybody, it's 3.01. Let's start the uh, joint meeting of the Santa Cruz Valley Habitat Agency. I do want to announce that we do not have a quorum for the governing board, uh, Angie. So um, since that, we did not, yeah, we don't have a quorum. Items 1, 4, 5, and 6 will be deferred to the next meeting, which is June 21st. And with that, members, if it's all right with you, we will start this meeting with a report from Mr. Glines. Mm -hmm. Walt here? Walt, not here. Yeah. Nope, roll call first? Yes. I, roll call? I thought we were not doing roll call. For implementation. Implementation, okay, not for governing. All right. Chair Lazat? Here. Board members Tucker? Here. Spring? Here. Carmen? Here. Fanacall? Here. Courtney? Wasserman? Here. Lazat? Callan? Here. Oh, Harney, sorry. Present. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, again, Walt's not here, so we'll come back to Walt when he comes in. And items one, four, five, and six were deferred. So that brings us to item number two review the proposed 1819 budget. You know what, Doug? I'm used to the card thing, and I apologize for that. Doug, please, public comment. 49ers just did a free agency pickup and whatever else you want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll do the, the other part and right. defer to the talent uh, for the important stuff. This comment probably is of more interest in the uh, public advisory committee, but I'll, I'll mention it here. Uh, as you know, I'm interested in trying to find ways to educate the public that is meaningful, clear, and simple enough that I can understand them. And so I wanted to call to your attention a document that's uh, currently undergoing public review. It's called the Regional Conservation Investment Strategy. It's a state initiative. The Open Space Authority is uh, taking it on for this county. It's large-scale advanced mitigation. Um, but the pieces that, that I actually understood had to do with uh, species profiles. There's a very nice section that uh, talks about their life history and uh, ecological requirements and some other stuff like that that is a little easier to understand and in one place than the, the descriptions in the habitat plan of 2012. So uh, if you have an agency that you know, talks to the public and uh, you talk about species, you might want to take a look at, at that information. There's also a fairly useful description of regulatory overview and agencies and that sort of stuff. And the, the Habitat Agency is mentioned there as well as the Army Corps and other people that we've come to love to love. So I just wanted to mention the availability of that information and contrast it to what you have in your, your plan um, as I seek to continue to find ways to be educated enough to actually understand what you're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doug, and bless you, Mike. And anybody else in the public wish to speak about anything not on today's agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to item number two and turn it over to you, Edmund. Thank you. Okay, so appreciate you all coming out on this rainy day, and we're just gonna go, this is sort of officially our budget workshop session of today's meeting. And given the quorum challenges, it's one of the main and only things on today's meeting. <laughs> so the workshop outline, um, so talk about the accomplishments for this fiscal year, goal and objectives for next fiscal year, and a summary of the next fiscal year's budget. So uh, we'll give an overview over program management, land acquisition, management and monitoring, the Western Burling Owl Program, our habitat restoration efforts and permit integration. So uh, from a program management standpoint, one of the, uh, the biggest things we do and, and one of the most important is um, uh, interfacing with our two boards and um, the public advisory committee as well as various stakeholder groups, including the R RCIS, we're, a, we're part of the steering committee for that. Um, we do a lot of plan interpretation and clarification memos. As all of you in local government know, uh, general plans always need modification. This is no different. 
uh, permit compliance and annual report. The annual report will be presented to the implementation board in May and the governing board in um, June. Um, we concluded the Pacheco Creek property donation agreement with Caltrans. That's our 55 acre property on Highway 152. It's the second property enrolled in the reserve system. Uh, we meet with NGOs all the time. I've had meetings with Google and um, uh, what, what I came away from with Google was given that they may seek a permit from us at some point in the future, they didn't think it would look good optics um, that we would maybe be borrowing money from them or getting a, uh, some foundation money from them to do a land acquisition. So that's how their attorneys ruled on that. And I think they were correct. I hadn't thought of that when we were initially thinking about outreach to uh, uh, Google and some of the other tech companies. So, but the Moore Foundation, the Packard Foundation, um, we continue to work closely with them um, to uh, uh, work on land acquisitions and scientific research. Um, we've concluded the application process for the creation of 501c3. We should hear in April from the state whether it's, that would be the final approval. So training for San Jose and Santa Clara County staff is a big part of what we do too, to get them up to date on how to implement the permit. I won't get into this, but this gives you an idea of all the public outreach we do, all the different groups we're part of. Now on to finance. So we, uh, the fourth uh, audit of, uh, we had a successful fourth audit of the Habitat Agency and that was gonna be presented today, but we will present it to the governing board in June. And our auditor will present that. Um, successful submittal of the AB 1600 report, that's the Mitigation Fee Act. Um, the tie is the nexus between our fees and how we spend them. We hired a CPA to advise and oversee fiscal functions. Um, they'll, they'll also be involved in the 501c3 uh, fiscal oversight hired a new CPA form to per, uh, firm to perform the audit, and this is a three-year contract. The accounts payable and banking function transitioned from the county to the Habitat Agency, and it was successful, and I'd like to thank Jill Moross and, and Denise for uh, making that happen very smoothly. Working on developing in-house payroll function, that's something we hope to do next year. Um, and uh, we've already uh, got a, a program through our Black Mountain software to do that, and now it's just actually breaking away from APA and doing that. Um, so to date, we've gotten $107,000 in grant funding. Uh, we projected $4 million, and the reason why um, it's only the 107 and not the four, because the Section 6 grants are being held up in Washington, and this is for the last year of the Obama administration where the, there was a budget allocation for Section 6. And I was on a phone call yesterday and there's not really a clear understanding of why these grants haven't been released yet. And so we were expecting to get one. California, that's why. Yeah, it, it could be. And there is some, I was informed by Fish and Wildlife staff that there's a, a somebody high up in the Department of Interior that's reviewing all grants big and small. So I'm, I'm not sure how this is gonna play out. The other two million was a um, WC, Wildlife Conservation Board usually matches the Section 6 grant with money from state bond. So um, that's why it's only 107,000 instead of 4.1 million. I'm projecting our revenues will be over 10 million um, by the end of the year. We had projected 5.5, so for once we exceeded um, our revenue projections from project fees. So these are some of the policies and procedures we've gone through this year. I'd, I'd like to uh, bring to attention to the, the last three bullets where we did an update, successful update to the conservation easement template and we got all the cities to sign and the two wildlife agencies to sign onto that. Um, we're working with the Water District uh, to memorialize the desunding funding uh, disbursements to the Habitat Agency. So we're working on an MOU with um, the
the water district staff, and I know that'll be going to the water district board at some point soon and coming to this board here. And that's really good news because that's uh, uh, the D7 funding. There was $8 million set aside to help with uh, implementation of the HCP, NCCP, and to assist with uh, um, kind of overall conservation objectives in this county. And that'll, that'll help towards land negotiations and um, by having this money available and in, in, in acquiring land. And we have, uh, we've negotiated a, a formal MOU with, this, uh, with the Santa Clara Valley Open Space Authority, which is going to their board in April. So this is their staffing. So we have four and a half people. No, nothing's changed since last year. Uh, Successful completion of a 401 safe harbor plan audit. And as you remember, we were, because of the poor advice we got from our previous payroll company, Elevity, we were in some hot water with the IRS with that uh, top heavy assessments of executives and uh, staff contributing to um, a, a 401k program. So we set up a safe harbor plan and we successfully passed the audit test this year. We updated the employee handbook. Uh, the other stuff is the various consultants and contracts we have to help with the implementation of, of the plan. So a little bit on land acquisitions. I mentioned uh, Pacheco Creek. Um, where negotiations continue with the uh, wildlife agencies and uh, Santa Clara County Parks for placing conservation easement over Calero Park, which is a, a very important property because of the plant occurrences out there and I'm meeting with county staff on th third, next Thursday um, to uh, try to speed this up because uh, it's important to get that property in the reserve system. Even though it's protected, the wildlife agencies don't view it as protected until either we own it or our easements over it. And those uh, plant occurrences are very important for moving, um, protecting those plant occurrences are very important for moving projects forward. We have to protect uh, plants in advance of take. And this property is being offered up by the county as a uh, mitigation in lieu of county public projects. We've had land negotiations with Lamont. Um, you may remember we talked with Dr. Lamont in the past. We're talking with him again and we put in a joint offer with OSA and I don't know <laughs> where it's going. Yeah, I thought, I thought we had a deal, but uh, Gonzales Ranch is a TNC owned property on the border with San Benito. That's going very well. There's a lot of complications with the UTC property, uh, but we've had good negotiations with the UTC corporation on this, uh, another 1500 acres of that property. And then there was Sargent Ranch. We, we joined post uh, the Santa Cruz Land Trust and the Nature Conservancy and putting in a joint offer on that. And it was a full price offer that was uh, uh, rejected by the Debt Acquisition Corporation of America. Um, so I don't know where that's going to go. We're, uh, we're more a funding partner on that than the lead negotiator. Um, negotiating a land in lieu of fees agreement with the San Jose Regional Wastewater Facility for burrowing owls, that's, that's moving along pretty good. And I mentioned the grants earlier. Hopefully we'll find out soon whether we'll be penalized for being in Santa Clara County or not. Man uh, management and monitoring. So um, uh, the draft of the management and monitoring plan has been completed for the Coyote Ridge Open Space Preserve. And um, I talked to Tara yesterday and she expects that the plan will be completed in a, and hopefully approved by early summer. Um, we've done, um, as you can see, a lot of surveys on, on uh, Calero and uh, Coyote Ridge, and we did invasive species eradication out at the, the Calero Ponds restoration site. Western Burrowing Owl Program. Um, Survey and Resource Group is the one that does all the surveys for us and helps inform where the fee zone is. We did an update on the fee zone. Um, we have a management plan in place for the 201 acres of the RWF facility um, in managing it for burrowing owls. Uh, we also have a, 
a previously negotiated one with uh, Don Edwards Wildlife Reserve. And we're trying to do one with um, um, OSA at their Coyote Valley property. And that ties into the last discussion point, the last two, because, uh, because of the owls declining uh, population, we've now initiated tier three activities. And one of those is a captive rearing of uh, captured owl chicks. And we've had a couple meetings with the San Mateo Humane Society and they're equipped to do that. And there's a couple good models out there in up in, actually there's three, the San Diego Zoo does this, um, the Calgary Zoo, and then there's another program um, in British Columbia. So we need to find out more uh, the Humane Society and, and our staff need to find out a little bit more how they do captive rearing of all chicks and set up a similar program with the Humane Society in, in San Mateo. And those would those captive chicks would then be released at the Coyote Valley <coughs> site, um, uh, the OSA property. It has uh, ground squirrels and kind of the right type of habitat for the owls. And we've had some good discussions with the airport um, the airport was gl uh, glad to hear we had done um, a management program with RWF, you know, another special district within the city. And, and Edmund, when you say the airport, can yes, you specify yes. which one? Yes, sorry, uh, the San Jose um, International Airport, uh, the Mineta. So they, um, so we're, things are moving a lot slower than I would like on getting that agreement uh, in place, but they have been very open to um, um, the technical advice we've been giving them on how to manage the airfields for squirrels and owls. Hey, can I ask a question? Yeah. Yes. So, sorry. <laughs> um, so we're going to San Mateo for the, for the breeding program for the owls. Did we approach the Wildlife Center of Silicon Valley? I, from from what I understand, the San Mateo one is it has a, and I've visited their site twice. They have quite the uh, animal rescue program there. They they have uh, state of the art facilities. There's they have a, some very um, wealthy donator uh, donors that have. It's it's quite the facility if you haven't been there. Uh, so this is the one that was recommended to us by uh, Dave Johnson and um, yeah versus the one here. Right. Yeah, because I don't know much about this stuff, but I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I may, the, uh, here in our area, we also have the WERC, uh, who's very active and doing a great job. And then, you know, sometimes people think, why do we care about owls? Uh, we, we just managed to, to, to rescue one two weeks ago here in the middle of town. Someone found the little owl uh, of Butterfield in Maine in that area here downtown. Uh, posted it on social media. She didn't know what to do. I contacted a friend from WRC. Within 10 minutes, uh, she drove down and rescued that owl. So they are still in our area. They do exist, and it's worth uh, saving them. Yeah, and there's and there's quite a network. I've heard that based on what species somebody finds, it ends up at the at these various shelters around um, Northern California. It's pretty impressive. And you're talking about specifically though the burrowing owl. The burrowing owl, correct. So permit integration, as, as many of you know, we're trying to integrate the 401 permitting and the Section 7 permitting um, that occurs when impacts to steelhead trout are, are being triggered through a, a, a 404 permit. And those are primarily triggered by uh, bridge projects and um, work, work within the Creek Corridor. So we've made tremendous progress with NOAA on integrating, coming up with sort of a programmatic coverage and a streamlined Section 7 consultation process for any uh, species uh, impacts to salmon in our creeks. And I'm expecting that we'll um, complete that process uh, probably around this time next year. We're having good meetings with the regional board. I don't know where it's going to go, um, but we're still meeting with them and they are going to be giving us advanced mitigation credit for the San Felipe uh, Creek project, which then uh, project proponents as they come in will be able to use those credits. 
And as I mentioned, we are involved in the RCIS process and we work diligently to ensure that it's uh, consistent with the HCP and CCP. So now a little bit of our goals and objectives for next fiscal year. So uh, getting that conservation easement over Calero is one of our top priorities and then acquiring um, another property uh, beyond the two we've already acquired uh, that would be a critical uh, priority property for the, for the reserve system. Uh, complete the Gonzales Ranch deal and then complete the land in lieu with, the, with RWF for burrowing owls. And then the, doing the management agreements uh, for owls with OSA and or the San Jose International Airport. Complete the San Felipe Creek restoration project Phase one of the, of the construction will start this spring. Complete the Cowdy Ridge Pond Restoration Project. Um, get the Friends of the Silicon, or Santa Clara Valley Habitat Agency up and running. Invest the endowment in the Silicon Valley Community Foundation. The, the, the 501c3 was created uh, for the, for the sole purpose of investing the endowment, but it also can serve as, a, as a, a, a kind of an entity that could accept donations and apply for grants that only 501c3s can, can receive. Um, we, once, once we know, I know Congress has uh, appropriated uh, money for the Section 6 program for this fiscal year, but no applications have been put out by the Department of Interior yet and um, so if and when that happens, we'll apply for another Section 6 grant. We'll continue to work with uh, all potential funding partners, including um, foundations and uh, non-government organization, the NGO community. We'll submit some more research grants, um, submit additional restoration project specific grants, and continue working on permit integration. Um, we're also going to be starting work on developing uh, an online interactive species monitoring database for people who are doing work in the field and eventually integrating that into the application permitting process. So when an applicant comes in, a lot of the stuff can be done online. So strengthen the National HCP Coalition's capacity to function as an effective national advocacy group, continue to advocate in Sacramento, outreach and coordination with local universities to do research and develop internship opportunities. We've already started doing that, but we could do more. And then continue to work with the Point Blue Straw Program and the San Jose Conservation Corps and Charter School. <coughs> so the fiscal year 1819 draft budget gives the Habitat Agency the financial resources necessary to accomplish the goals and objectives outlined above. And this is a review of our um, operating budget. So um, the first column there is um, the budget that we estimated it would be this time last year. This is where we are currently. Uh, I, I'm anticipating that revenues will be over 10 million but this is where we are at this point in time at 9,205,928. For next year's budget, we're anticipating uh, 5 million in uh, revenues from fees, mitigation fees, and six from grants. And this is a little, uh, a, a, a strong estimate, in my opinion. It, it's dependent on the Section 6 program happening, and um, it includes the water district money of $2 million for this fiscal year, and it would include a WCB match, and 100000 is the is the lag research grants we would expect to get. If the Section 6 program doesn't happen, and but the park bond passes in June, because it's uh, uh, Proposition 68 is what, it, what it's being called, then there will be WCB money for NCCPs. So that, that, that possibly could still be
be available next year, but sometimes it takes a couple years for those uh, um, approved voter propositions to get funded as they sell bonds. So that, that number on grants is a little aggressive at this point in time. At, as I learn more about the Section 6 program, I, I'm going to be in Washington um, in a couple, uh, couple weeks, the beginning of April. Hopefully I'll have a better picture then on, wh on what's what. Uh, but, that, but that number could be reduced by uh, 2 to $4 million. Question? Yes, thank you. Um, the one thing that struck me on this one is the burrowing owl fees, which doubled. Yes. <clears throat> so, and of course, I'm well aware that the owl population is declining yes. quickly. So are we authorizing development on their habitat much faster than we thought we would? No, no. This is that Meadow Fair project in East San Jose. There used to be birds four years ago near there. There were two nesting. There was one nesting pair. And that's what triggered the fees for that 81-acre development site. So the birds it were, if, if that site had been managed differently and it was being managed for the owls, then there might have been more owls out there. But, but given it was just the two and they hadn't been seen out there in the last three years, um, it, that's, that's what triggered the fees. But it, it, they, they hadn't been seen there in a while. So the, the, the problem for the owls is the loss of a lot of foraging habitat with all the new development. And, and this definitely contributes to the loss of foraging habitat, absolutely. Because they, they'll fly from uh, a half acre to a, to a mile and a half away from the nests to forage. So even though they're doing very well on the RWF site, they're doing okay on the Warm Spring site, they're losing a lot of valuable foraging habitat. And that's why we're talking about doing the captive re rearing and releasing in South County. Yep. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. So, uh, and so going back to this row item on grants, and you mentioned earlier about four million was the estimate, and we've got one or seven K so far. Mm -hmm. And that is a little bit out of its federal level issue. So this, yes. there's a six million for mm -hmm. this fiscal year. Include those four million. It revenue. does. Yeah, okay. I'm not anticipating new um, that, section six. So that's why money. you said it's aggressive. Yeah, it's estimate. that the grant we currently. I should have explained that the grant we currently applied for and we're expecting to get this fiscal year will be awarded and we'll sign the contract next fiscal year. New section six money. I didn't put that. If if new section six money was real. That number would probably would have been ten million for grants. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. No, that's okay. Thank you. So this is our the budget. Um, so the budget request last year was for a little over three point six million. We're estimating that we're only going to spend um, about two thirds of that. At, um, around 2.3 million. And the main reason why we ran into some permit hiccups with the regional board and the, for our 1600 permit with the state for our Calero project. And I didn't want to rush construction, uh, not, not knowing when the rains were going to begin in October, September, October. So we delayed construction till this spring. So a lot of the money we were going to spend on construction is going to happen next fiscal year instead of this fiscal year. So that, so that reflects the main reason why we're spending significantly less than we budgeted for. And, and the converse applies to next year, that, that uh, not spending the money for the restoration project, mainly the San Felipe Creek, uh, that um, you know, they always talk about the pig and the in the in the snake. Yeah, yeah, the pig and the poke too. <laughs> so it's it's happening. Uh, so it's being the can, the can is the proverbial cans being kicked down the road. So that so that cost is 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 coming in next fiscal year. So earlier you mentioned you're looking into doing payroll internally. 
But you, you're not adding more employees. Does that mean you can cover it with the employees you have? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, this, um, if we had acquired the Rancho El Toro property, um, which was a 12,000 five acre, 500 acre ranch, I, I was gonna come to the board with the request to hire a, a land management specialist and uh, we'd probably be doing a contract with the Conservation Corps or some such entity to assist with management of a, that much acres. But since that didn't happen, <laughs> unfortunately, um, we, uh, we're, we're okay with our existing staff, yes. And we do have a lot of consultants that help us with a lot of these restoration projects. So. So this sort of just lays out over time um, expenses and budget from fiscal year 16 to date. And you can see that uh, the biggest area of increase has been with the implementation of the conservation strategy. We're doing a little bit more this year with technical support and permitting because we're gonna do that database, creation of the database. And we're really hopefully ramping up the integration of the 401 permit in with the rest of our permits and um, uh, completing the in lieu fee instrument uh, which then will be more in step with our in lieu fee hcp and you could see that staffing is is, is remained the same uh, unfortunately acres conserved has remained the same and uh, uh, you you get a sense of how many uh, permitted projects we had the last uh, three years, and we don't know the final number on that for, um, for 18, and we don't know what it'll be for 19. So the projects coming in for so far for 18 have been ones that paid a lot of fees, uh, mainly in the city of San Jose, but a couple water district projects and a couple Gilroy projects too. So uh, this is the final habitat budget will be submitted to the governing board for their approval on June 21st, 2018. Thank you, Member Tucker. So I do have a question. So as we go more into paying or get, receiving the in lieu fees, well, uh, do we have a plan? I refresh my memory, I can't remember. Let's say for example, the Burring Owl, you collected over $4 million in fees. Mm -hmm. What is the plan going forward to either move them what are you doing with that money? To yes. <laughs> yeah. The whole goal is yeah. to protect so, these species. So. Yes, so, so that Meadowfair project coming in was really key to giving us the money to start doing the captive rearing program, uh, potentially translocating the birds from the airport and some other sites. That's a lot more controversial. Um, mm -hmm. There are people at, within the Department of Fish and Wildlife, the State Department of Fish and Wildlife that are uncomfortable with that. It's a big deal. So we would be spending a lot more money on those sort of activities and hopefully having some successful outcomes at the Coyote Valley site and, and spending money to manage that site more for owls. And so that's, so that's kind of the so the money we're collecting now is money that'll give us the capacity to deal with the birds over the next seven to eight years. Okay. Yeah, so, so, so that money was very important to fund activities for the next seven or eight years. Okay. And before and, any and, more committee and questions, I have to they that exist. Too, not to I'm gonna turn to the public. Any questions about item number two? Nope, thank you. Any other committee questions of Edmund on item two? I have one. Yes, please. Uh, I know you gave us an update on land acquisitions and negotiations. The Young Ranch didn't feature. Do you have an update on that one? No, nothing. I talked to uh, Craig Edgerton, who some of you may know from his days at Silicon Valley Land Trust, which is now called the Land Trust of Santa Clara Valley. Um, every, everything seems to be called Santa Clara Valley now. <laughs> so... Um, he was going to talk to the Youngs about potentially, uh, I guess, um, selling us the land. And, and I met with them a couple years ago and, and they talked about a land in lieu of fees deal, which was 
and, and I speak as a Habitat Agency EO, and that was a great deal for us. I realize there's a lot of complications, both with the city and the county on whether that project should be permitted. But if they did a cluster development and set aside the rest of the property as uh, offset of their fees, that's a great deal for us. But how it fits into the land use rules and the zoning rules of the city and the county, we, we respect that. So, but if that ever happened and we could get the land that way, we would do that in a heartbeat. But as far as selling the land, to, to date, they, they've been very resistant to do that. All right, thank you. I, we do have another question, yes. One more question. So, I don't, maybe you can't say, but why did Sergeant Ranch reject a full price offer? I don't know. I, well, I do know. I shouldn't say that. The quarries, through their estimations, is worth a lot of money, a lot more than the value of the property. Mm -hmm. So if the quarry operations gets permitted, I should let and Chairman Wasserman address that. Thank you. There, what um, Edmund's talking about is their application to construct a sand quarry. And the projected revenue from that is significant. And so there's an appraisal today's value as is. And there's an appraisal or a value anyway based on what could be. And those are significantly different numbers. So, thank you. All right, with that, on item two, there is no action needed, so we'll just consider item two taken care of. I will turn to the public one more time. Even though we deferred items one, four, five, and six to June 21st, anybody here wish to speak about any of those four items? Seeing none, we'll move on to item number three. Okay. After number three, we'll turn things over to Chair Linda Lazat for the implementation board action items. Yep, closed session. So I already know right now that I will not be here June 21st. So what, what requires the quorum for the governing board? For the governing board is one member from each agency. Okay. So if um, Council Member Harney can, no, okay. And your alternate is also Mayor Roland Velasco. So if he's able to attend, okay. okay. Thanks. So um, on the executive officer notes, uh, it just basically highlighting. The, the two advocacy trips that are planned, one in Sacramento, where I'll join other members of the California Coalition, and then the one in Washington, where I'm joining uh, members of the National Coalition, including several from, uh, from our state. Uh, the Contra Costa plan will be there, the um, San Diego will be there, uh, Riverside County will, uh, will be there. I'm not sure if anybody else from California is coming uh, some representatives from the building industry here in California will also be uh, out there uh, lobbying Congress. And the state one will be several of the California plans. So we'll be meeting with uh, uh, various uh, elected representatives in the state. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Anybody from the public wish to address anything that he just said on item number three? Seeing none, we will consider the governing board adjourned. And I'll turn things over to Chair Lazat. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, let's see, since we've uh, moved the approval of the minutes of the joint meeting of the Governing Board and Implementation Board to the next meeting, the only item on our agenda is a closed session. Um, so we are going to go into closed session. The item is, uh, is under Executive Officer Compensation, and we will report out after closed session. Mm -hmm.